Hello everyone, and today we're taking a look at Pet Sim. It's a pedestrian simulator for Rhino and Grasshopper. And you basically have the simulation of people that go from one place to the other, and then, oh, it right now, it just crashed. And then you also have the um, a certain visualization of that component as well. So that's pretty cool. And you basically can uh, run the simulation and have people come out just one by one and then go th through an obstacle or uh, around the obstacle and then going to the finish line. So let's get started and see how this thing actually works. Perfect. So first of all, you need to actually download pet sim from uh, by gradient 12 it is on food for rhino you just go there you just sign up it's very really easy and then you just download it it's for free it's really useful and he also has some very nice um, libraries and examples what i'm trying to do here is um, trying to get this idea more closer to you and run you through the examples well, he has a very some very good examples, but I'm trying to get you through through the basics of that. So, basically, just let's, let's just start with a new file. So, we basically want to create like uh, one start point, one one end point. So, one start point would be here, and then an end point over there. So, we basically want the people to go from over here to over there to the other side. So, we're doing this by. Um, well, first of all, we had the points created and then under the pet sim tab, we need to first create some gates. And those gates are basically the points where the people appear or disappear in that matter. So um, this will be like our starting gate. So we give it a name called start and we give it um, also an access radius. So basically like at what distance those things uh, get created so this will be like that and we give it a boolean toggle as well to um, give this basic this draw function normally that like shows around here so if we just press this true you see it gives us our little start here and um, and then we also want to create the same thing uh, as well like create the gates and the position would be the end position. You would also create the draw dot one and the access radius. I want to have it a little bit um, bigger or actually smaller. So basically the radius at what time they can relieve this place. And um, we also want to give it a name and the name would be uh, finish. Good. Now, now we have the start and um, finish point defines. And we also need to now create a, um, because we want to have a in-between place. So we want to create a target. And this target is basically um, a place where they cannot disappear, but where can they just go? And they have to, if they see it, they can be there a little bit and then finish uh, to the uh, final point. So we just create that and set multiple points like here. And those will be the positions. And we also want to define how long of the time they will be here in seconds. Um, and I think it will be in seconds or is it in ticks? Actually, not that sure. Yeah, in frames. Okay. And we give it like just like maybe 50 frames or so 50 like ticks. And we also need to give it a program. And this program is like a little more advanced, but like it basically can make so you have different program types, for example, theater or um, leisure or other program types. So depending on the targets, uh, it, is a, it is a different program and they rather go there or over there. And once now we have that created, you also want to draw it so we can see it. Um, and you have to define, hope it's correct as far as I know, because it doesn't draw the uh, targets at the moment. But I think that's fine for now. Ah, it just shows up like this. Okay. Now we also want to create a template of the person. Right now, those gates are just defined, but we also want to define the person goes basically from A to B. So that will be now this person template. So we give uh, this would be the starting gate. 
and that would be the destination gate. And now we also want to, depending on what the person wants, um, we also need to give it a program. So basically now this target basically overlaps with the program that we have here. So we give those interests to this person. And then we also can give it a probability. Um, in this case, it would be just one. And this probability is basically the chance of uh, if they, the, they will be spawning there or not. So if you have several places, they would go there directly and in, in other places, um, they, they just won't do that. And we also need to define how much the person sees. So for example, we can give it a um, angle and a shape of like the viewing cone. And that will be the uh, vision that we have. So now this lights up normally and now we had defined the person basically. And we now have to run the simulation with that. So this is the pet simulation system. And we also give it a button in this case. And this would be the persons. And we can also say how many of those people we want in this case. So in this time we do it just like 99 people, actually quite a lot, but that's fine. And we also want to say in how many like intervals they come. So you just do it like at 11, for example, for now. And we have to as well implement because right now they would just go from here to there. And we also want them to go around this place as well. So we just do a geometry, right click, set one geometry and place this as the obstacle curve. And now it's, yeah. And it needs to know as well the targets that we want to set here that we defined here before. So now this lights up normally as well. And right now we cannot see anything because we have to go to the um, uh, simulation here and have, we have to draw the people and actually uh, put this people in thing in here. And we also need to find a timer that goes on here like that. And we just do the timer a little bit small to, to 20 milliseconds. And you see every like 11 of those places, the, the people come out there one by one by one. So yeah, and they obviously they see this place here and they go around it. And as you see, it's, it's if I will change it during the time, it's, uh, it ceases as, as well. So that's pretty, pretty useful. And here it bugged a little bit, but um, let me actually re-import this one. Just do another rectangle. It can be also be a square or a circle or whatever geometry you want to have. Now it's uh, oh, okay. An invalid pole line. I don't know why this is happening right now, but let me just do another rectangle here. We put in the geometry as well again. And okay, now it works. I don't know what just happened there before. Anyway, now we have the uh, the little obstacle that they want to go around with. And now the cool thing is, for example, if you want to create another uh, point, for example, um, one that goes to the same finish line. So I just want to copy it, um, the, per the person templates. And I would want to create another uh, gate, but this gate is at a different position, like this one here and it has a different program. So this program name is, for example, with the, um, the waiter, the waiting people. Yeah, like this. And the other program would be none. And now we would have two different program types and those would be like the interest of this one. And then we can, if we just change the start gate like this and I want to actually have it as a lower probability as well for them. So maybe like only half the probability uh, here. And now I will shift and click it to the person templates. And when I would restart this animation, 
Okay, it actually doesn't register for the moment. Ah, because I need to change the person template here. Yeah. So now we have we are in the position where we have two different gates where people are coming from. So one time it will be um, it is the gate over here, and the other time is the gate over there. And there's always a probability of them coming from here or from there, and the maximum amount of uh, 99 people and um, every 37 frames uh, it actually uh, the person comes out now the good thing is um, we want to create a basically a grid where we can where we can see if there will be if there will be like some kind of um, possibility that where are the zones of most congestions for example so we can do that by there is this um, on the post here in the grid person counter this is basically a grid that we define and this grid then gives us the counts uh, out of those things as well so we will first create a grid in the first place so um, here it asks us for the um, bottom left uh, point of the grid but we will just first create a grid in general like this over here and just to see how we uh, this grid would look we go on the vector grid and then we go on the square grid actually this will be our main plane and then uh, the size of the grid will be defined by this and the extensions will be uh, defined like that so we will cover most of the place that we want to uh, take a look at and now it's uh, this will basically function as our base grid and we will put the same things this will be like the visualization effect but this will we need for showing it on uh, the people basically or like getting the data out of those things so the people we already have here from the top and the extensions will be um, those ones from here and the cell size we also have from there and the base point we have from here and we might need to give it a reset button as well so it can work properly good and now it basically gives us um, for each of the individual grids uh, how it I think it records actually how often people were on there like that so if you just look here, for example, here's, at this grid point we had 10 people and 11 people. So at this grid point is a very like most used one. Other ones are very or like rather empty, and also gives us um, um, the points where there is the most congestion or the most use, which is probably most likely this point, I think. Anyway. And we can now visualize this data as well. For example, if we go to um, if you make a boundary surface of each of those cells, and we actually want to um, flatten those here as well. Now it actually crashed for some reason. Let me just restart it quickly. Yeah? And we basically have those um, cells defined here in the beginning, and now we want to give them a color as well. So we do like just RGB. And so it will be like from the normal like uh, RGB values, but we take them all in here. So they will just be converted to one um, different color as well. So we have those values now defined here, but we might want to, um, we want to apply them as well with like custom preview. And we take the geometry of the surfaces here that will be our color but as you see now it's very like you cannot really see anything at all and we can counter to do that by just do a multiplication and um, like this for example and then just put the results of that here and make it a little bit like stronger and this is already really useful and I think for example if we would just increase decrease the size oh, okay we actually might we might need to reset actually the those things because now we have the problem that oopsie we have the problem that um 
uh, it's from the old thing. So we then need to reset and see where it actually would work correctly. <laughs> I didn't know why I changed that back there, but like, let's just have it like this. Anyway, and now we have the advantage that um, it shows us our uh, definitions of like where the most people are. A good way also now, for example, we can not only have it like this, but we can also make a box rectangle and have like a 3D uh, rec um, definition of it as well. So we create, we use the cells that we had here and we simply use the height that we used as RGB value. And you see now it really nicely uh, creates those um, those things over time and we can maybe even give it the same color as well and yeah so now you hear a very nice representation of where those people would go and would be and obviously if we, for example extrude this one here a little bit I don't know if it is, uh... yeah it gives us a very nice representation of where would people actually would go and they would actually hang out so that's like pretty useful and i think in order to make this go a little bit faster you can just simply um if you go on the pet sim again and you go to the system settings you can actually change those here so for example if we make the fps a little bit like hundreds for example it would actually would need to tick faster as far as I know. Anyway, good. So right now, so this is like a very good way of just experiencing and knowing uh, where people actually go. And yeah, that's pretty useful. And for evaluating uh, areas and um, knowing where people actually go, I think it's a really useful tool for knowing that and making actually a good prediction of that. PetSim is a very good, they have made a very nice uh, engine of how that actually could work um, properly. So yeah, hope that helped you a little bit. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you can make something with this as well. And yeah, try out some other plugins. Try out this plugin, it's very great. I will put a link in the description so you can check it out and uh, learn for yourself. Thanks and bye-bye.